G'day guys, this is Nick at stridewise.com and I am here in Nashville, Tennessee with the brilliant and talented and frustratingly handsome cobbler Heath of Trenton and Heath, the vastly more popular than mine YouTube channel, which is run by Trenton and Heath, who are brothers and cobblers in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and uh, they actually get their hands dirty with actual shoes and boots. We do. How's it going, man? It's going good. Thanks for coming onto my channel in your workshop. Absolutely. Uh, awesome, so I'm doing my first, you're doing, thank you, yep. thank you in advance. We'll do. We will do my first uh, resole uh, for, for a pair of boots I've done on my channel. And um, I'm actually uh, a really smart dude because I flew down here to Nashville to do a resole, landed here at the airport, uh, and then realized that I'd forgotten the boots that I was supposed to be resoling uh, here in Nashville, Tennessee. Because That's like the story of my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm a thoroughly, so actually I just got these overnighted. All right, it is. These are the right boots. These are my Red Wing Mock Toes. Uh, these are, the, this is the charcoal rough and tough leather. And these are my first pair of proper boots. And uh, you can see they're pretty ground down. Uh, what do you think of my boots? You like them? Hey, I do. Uh, you know, that's, that's going to happen when you live in New York. You walk everywhere, so. Yeah. So, um, let's resole it. What's, what does this look like? All right. Um, we're just, luckily, hey, these are good year welted, so we're just going to have to work from the welt downward. So it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so these have, obviously, Christy soles on them and uh, the red ring version. And we're just going to take these off, um, maybe replace the midsole. It's up to you if you want to put on a fresh midsole. I'd recommend it. All right. And uh, then we'll just rebuild them from there. Just bring it down to the well, then bring it back out. Now, the midsole, uh, I mean, they usually say it's a cork midsole, but cork isn't often usually... So the cork is going to fill the cavity. And when we crack them open, you'll see exactly what we're talking about. Um, but the midsole is strictly between your welt and your outsole. Yeah, you wouldn't call the cork a midsole, would you? No, yeah. no it's just a filler uh -huh. and uh, between your midsole and your insole. So, yeah, a little uh, white rubber part on there, that's our, that's our midsole. So the midsole is actually rubber on the, on the Red Wing, and then there's a leather insole, is yes, that right? Um, in fact, I think almost all uh, Red Wings use a synthetic midsole. All right, cool. All right, let's 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 cut open my shoes. I'm excited. So, since we're going to be taking the, um, the midsole off, we can actually just split, and you can see, it's, they don't use a lot of glue. And that's the good thing about a Goodyear welted boot, is you don't need a lot of glue, because the stitches are doing the job. So, we're just going to go around and break that seal. There you go. Look at those shoes. And there's no, they don't put a whole lot of cork in there because the, the glue pulled some of the cork out. And we're going to pull all this out and put it uh, put some fresh cork in. All right, so here, this is the cork filler. So this, this is the, cork is the filler. canvas rib. Uh, this yep, is the, this is okay. the gimme. And then this is the, the welt, the Goodyear welt? So this is the welt right here. Uh-huh, yeah. So, this, so it's leather, the welt. Yep, so uh -huh. you've got leather welt and then the upper which will, there's the lining and there's the outsole, and then they are sandwiched up against this um, rib. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So this is the modern Goodyear welted process. Um, when they actually started the Goodyear welted process, it was still leather, but they would just cut the leather and fold it up into a rib, and then the machine could ch -ch 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 stitch, it, um, mm -hmm. stitch it on. So this is kind of a newer thing. And this brown thing through here, this is the leather insole. That is your insole. Uh -huh. That's the same part that your foot is on when you slip them on. And that's what you want. The best insole is going to be a veg tan. You know, it's interesting. People are a lot more invested. They're, they're more finicky about having a veg tan leather insole than veg tan leather outers, uh, uppers. You know? Uh, it's very strong. Yeah, uh, it's, it's very tough and, and the stuff that you're going to use for an insole, obviously, depending on whether it's going to be um, carved or, you know, a, a modern Goodyear welted process, it's, it's going to be thick. So 
And what did you just spray in this? Uh, this is just a glue thinner because this is just cork with glue mixed in and just kind of helps to loosen it up. And toss out on the floor. It's a shop. <laughs> and just as a minor commercial here for uh, Trenton and Heath, uh, it's still these guys, it's just Trenton and Heath that do, that do this stuff. You know, if you, if you send it off, it's not gonna be uh, going to some snotty nosed teenager who's here trying to make some, some lunch money. This is, this is still yeah. the, the rough, rough hands of Trenton and or Heath are the ones that are gonna be caressing your boot. Now that we've got the cork out, you can see it's a hollow cavity and that needs to be filled with fresh cork. And so when the cork sets up, um, it'll allow your foot to sink back in and give you a, it's not gonna be as compressed. So it'll let you do another resole. Now, That's right. so the, you, the purpose of the cork is to help to uh, uh, absorb shock a little bit and also it molds around the shape of the foot. Exactly. So like it is, you have to sort of re-break in the sole to an extent, don't you? Uh, you do have to break in the sole just a little bit, but since the and so is, yeah. is already molded, then you're, you're pretty good. It'll be similar, uh -huh. um, And then you can see we still have the, the old stitches on the top of the welt, so we just have to pull all those out. And for anyone wondering uh, where the shank is on this, uh, Red Wing Marcos don't have one. <laughs> they don't. Well, a little fun fact, a lot of people don't know that. The, the other ones do, the Iron Ranger and everything does, but um, not, not the Marcos. It's a shank free boot. And this is the uh, kind of tiring part is having to get all the old stitches out. And the reason why you want to do this, and if you're gonna take your shoes to a cobbler and have them do it, um, the needle wants to, if it's on the same stitch width, it wants to follow the path of least resistance. Uh, but if it's filled up with thread, then it's gonna punch a new hole, and that will decrease the life of that welt, because it'll turn it into Swiss cheese if it's just you leave the old stitches in, stitch over on top of it, it'll just uh, perforate it. All right, you wanna pull the stitches? Just grab those stitches and just kinda of pick them out. How long did it take you to learn to be a cobbler? Um, I started uh, just as a hobby, um, tinkering around and self-taught on how to make shoes. And so uh, once you kind of get that in your hands. You can and, unmake shoes. Yeah, you don't, it, it goes from not your head and just into your hands. Then it's kind of the same thing with um, recrafting a shoe, just kind of working backwards, you know. That's the manliest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we right. need to put some fresh cork back in here and um, then we'll let it set up. So that's when it's coffee drinking time because it takes a little while for that to dry. And if you don't want to put a new sole on when it's still a little too soggy mm -hmm. because it'll just, it, your foot will press into it and uh, too much and then it won't yeah. give you a good base. So, so we're putting in cork. We're putting in cork. Cork and glue. Yep. Now, do you, I know that like I've got a pair of Trickers shoes and like they, uh, they're very proud of having the same cork formulation for the past 150, 200 years. Is it, is, is does much go into the formulation of the cork? Is um, there like a recipe that different cobblers use or like? Now that I don't know. Um, the hot cork is more production, uh, a mass produced thing. So a lot of shoes, you know, they have big vats. And when they've got the last in the production, they'll hold on and it squirts a big thing and they'll iron out. Basically what we're doing right now, uh, if you get you know, a bespoke pair, a lot of times they're gonna use sheet cork. Um, they just, you know, yeah. they like to do it all by hand. So it's, this is actually, in my opinion, some people ask, you know, like, is it better to do sheet or this? The, the, um, the hot cork, it costs a little bit more, mm -hmm. but um, so and it takes a little bit longer. But no, that no, doesn't mean it's better. Um, <laughs> it's just it. Um, uh, so it's a mixture of cork and glue now. Pretty right? much. Right now? Uh -huh. And the heat, like, kind of uh, 
and it just irons it out and it just irons it and out. it'll it'll uh and it's it'll get harder yeah. it'll get harder as it dries like that and so you can still touch it and it's still a little bit soft mm -hmm. but the longer it sits um it'll turn into a thick almost like a you buy a sheet of cork so let's go you went to the next one. Can I? Yep. I'd love to. Scoop oh some out and go for it. <laughs> I'm so pumped. Okay. And just, just push it on the shoe. You're okay. going to need a lot more. And just kind of scrape it off. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yep. And then just put a little bit down on your heel. And that's enough. Is it? Yep. Okay. It's hot. I do it with the middle part of it? Yep, just do it up there. And okay. what you want to do is I start from the toe and uh -huh. push it up towards the toe. Got it. And push down on it. Mm -hmm. How's that? Yep, and just kind of work your way back and forth. Do I need some more on there? Nope. You can actually kind of spread some of that back. Okay. There you go. And then start do the same thing in there and just kind of push it. Do I need more cork? You can spread that out a little bit more. There you go. So we'll set it these aside. Uh, see, some people don't like it. It's too chemically smell. It's kind of sugary. Uh, it, yeah, it didn't, it didn't bother me. <laughs> but uh, we'll set these aside and let them dry. And then we'll okay. come back in a little bit and uh, we'll continue. Fantastic. All right. Let's do it. How come there are holes in it? Um, that's, some people say it's to, uh, during the, the mold, to get it off of the mold. Some people say it makes it lighter. So, it's like some dress shoes, you'll pop off and it'll be a leather heel block, but it's got a it's hollow circle inside, like a lot of uh, Gucci's do that. and. Uh, from my experience, it makes it lighter because uh, stack leather, real stack leathers, heavy. Okay, uh, you need to put some glue on this. You got two sides. Yeah. You got the smooth side and you got the rough side. Uh, I like to put the rough side against the cork and then we can rough this up after we stitch it. Okay. Um, and then put some, some glue on it. So go ahead and put some glue on this. Glue on this, then, yep. and then, then it goes put, on like that. And then we're gonna put glue on the bottom of this as well. This is like a, a glue jar from last century. Yeah. This is like something I'd find in like a medieval church. <laughs> is this a particular type of, whoops, fancy? This is uh, like a contact cement, but it's formulated for leather. One. And we'll let this one dry. Go ahead and coat that one as well. Oh, okay. And make sure you get it. The welt is one of the most important parts, because so, that's actually what you're going to bond. All right, so this is going to be your new midsole. Instead of using rubber, we're going to switch it over and use natural veg tan leather. We're going to so, get an upgrade. Yes, we're getting an upgrade. Um, I like it better because it's more porous and uh, has those fibers that really grab onto the glue. And um, it just, it, it flexes better. It doesn't crack as easily. It's old school. So beautiful. So yeah, go ahead and grab your cutter. This guy. Like this? Yep, line it up, okay. swing it around. All right, okay. Can you hold it? Yep, go for it. All right. Right here? Yep. 
All right. And we'll flip it around. You grab that. Watch your fingers. Yeah, this is sharp. Yeah, it is sharp. <laughs> and there you go. Put it on there and let's cut another one. Yes. Yep, let's we'll swing it as close up there. All right, go for it. Sorry. I don't think you need a whole machine to do this. That's it. Beauty. And there's your insoles. Hey. I mean, your, your uh, midsoles. Can you smell that? Can you smell it? This was like every day in our face. <laughs> I'm gonna die young. All right, so we are now attaching the midsole, the leather, the vegetable leather midsole to the cork. Yep. All right, okay. Enjoy your new midsole boots. All right, so we just put the That's four it. foot on. Yep, flip and then it over. just roll it back like there. There you go. Beauty. That's it. I feel like it's like Robocop or something. Like I'm like taking my dead boots and giving them nope, very more simple. power than they ever had before. I've got a bigger hammer. It's somewhere around here. It's just the first one I could grab. <laughs> All right. All right, so you're gonna wanna uh, push the welt down onto the midsole. Yes. Like this, just pull it back. Uh-huh. Sit it on there and... There it is, yep, on kind of top tuck of it back the welt. There. That's it, and okay. you let go of that, the pressure will be good enough. Okay. And just roll it the other way. And yeah, it'll just kind of pull its way all the way around and turn the shoe as it goes. And this is putting pressure on yep. the welts and, yeah, so and it's helping to seal it to the Get midsole. a good seal, that's it. Okay. I feel like you helping, you, you walk me through this, it's like when you take a kid to the ATM machine and they're three years old and it's like, you want to punch in the pin code for me? <laughs> it's like, you did it, buddy. There you go. We did? That's it. Whoa. All right, so it's got a good good seal. Yes. And uh, then we can just trim this off. You can actually put it in here and it'll cut, but this is more for like cutting thick sole leather. Uh -huh. But this is just shoulder leather. Yeah. So you can just hand cut it off. That's exactly how I got this scar, except it wasn't with a shoe. It was with a stick. <laughs> You bring the blade towards you like that? I, I do because it's it's so buttery soft. It literally, I mean, I can guide it with my thumb. Okay. Have you ever uh, gotten any scars from this job? Oh yeah. Anytime you work with your hands, you're gonna get some scars. But if it's sole leather, it's a lot harder to cut through, which you can cut with it, with this, but you have yeah. to like keep your elbow cucked in because if you press and you hit a soft spot, it'll jerk out and yeah. Okay, so we've already trimmed it up. Now uh, we're gonna rough it up so okay. that we, then when we go to glue it, um, the glue will adhere to those fibers as well. But what we wanna do is rough it up before we stitch it. Because if we stitch it and then we rough it up, we're just gonna rip through the stitches. All right. And go, go slow with this because you don't wanna catch your finger with it. It'll, oh, no, I don't. Yep, yeah, and just kinda do long pulls. There you go, and just kind of do. You can press down a little bit. Right. And, little, and you can <laughs> it do feels like I'm ruining it. I, did, I just got this nice midsole, and I'm just. You're going to cover it up anyways. Okay. <laughs> there you go. And the most important is around the edges. That's uh, where you want it. I wasn't was sure if I should avoid the edges. No, you want it all roughed up because if it's smooth, there's nothing for the glue to grab onto. Got it. I would have thought a glue would do just fine. <laughs> Grabbing at the smooth stuff. No, but you're right, actually, yeah. When the surface is totally smooth, glue like doesn't work very well, does it? Yeah, it's like getting glue on you know, a piece of glass versus glue in your hair. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great point. That's good. Yeah? Yeah, we don't want to get it too fluffed up. All right. So we're going to stitch it now, and uh, then we'll come back and put some glue on it. So this is the uh, Goodyear welt machine 
and they've been making a Goodyear welts like this for well over 100 years. And uh, at the last second, I made the perhaps questionable decision to get red thread on these. So I now have gray boots with red thread running around the perimeter. Uh, I kind of just like flip the coin in my head. These are like my most beloved boots. I may have ruined them, or they might look pretty cool. So I guess we'll find out. There it is, red weld stitching. Will I regret it? I don't really know. But right now I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> it, it pops. It pops. It pops, the thing looks pretty cool. It's an old beat up boot and exactly. I, gotta, I gotta give some life to it. <laughs> We're gonna glue. More glue. More glue. There's a lot of glue involved in this stitching there process. There is. Yeah. So go ahead and uh, put some glue in here. All right. Um, and to speed things up, um, we've already glued the soles, so they're already ready for us. I think you mean I glued the soles off camera, and I've done lots and lots of work off camera, right? There you go. That's yeah. good. Right. It's a bit too and much we'll up here, put a, Nah, that's good. Right. You just want a little bit up there, and it'll soak in, dry, we'll put another coat, and then we'll put the final sole on. Okay, so we've got our glue on both, and yeah. just to kind of reactivate that glue, it's been sitting for a little while, we use heat. So we just blow some hot air on there and uh, it will make it tacky again. So when we put it on, it was tacky and then yep. we let it dry and now we're heating it to make it tacky again. Yes. And the reason we didn't put it just straight on in the first place is- Because it's just wet. And it was too wet. So yeah, now it's, it's not dry tacky. but tacky. Exactly. Got it. This is why cement constructed shoes sometimes aren't the best uh, because if you've been walking around on hot pavement or you've left them in a hot car during the summertime and they right. walk out, oh, my sole fell off. It's because the heat yeah. in your hot car reactivated the glue, which over time does become weaker and then your sole can fall off. But, but this is, I get that the midsole is stitched to the, 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 the weld is stitched to the upper and everything. But why does that not happen so much with boots, even if there's a lot of glue in boots? Uh, because a lot of times the midsole, having a large surface area like that, um, just gets a, a better bond than, I, if, than if it's a, a cheaper made shoe, it doesn't have a midsole, there's hollow sparks inside, there's pieces of rubber yeah. that's been stuck to, and that's another reason why I like to use the, uh, the leather midsoles. It sticks better. We'll press this and then we'll trim it off. All right. How many uh, PS sizes? Um, between 60 to 80. 60 to 80? The longer they sit, 
the harder that glue is going to bond together. So. All right. I see so many Vibram Christie souls, like shreds of them throwing the trash around the world. <laughs> yeah, they're popular souls. I just never realized there was so much non soul that gets cut off of They come in a lot of different sizes. It also depends on what you've got in stock at that time, so you find one that's close. Are there like cobblers, like they'll have like a, a machine that does this for them? Like, or they'll, it'll have the Click size 12, size 11, and it'll just like do it quickly, or is this always done by hand? Uh, no, it's always done by hand. Wow. There you go, I'm gonna toss that. And then we'll just uh, sand the rest of that off. Yeah. I have a new pair of boots. Yep. This is fantastic. Like, I, it's like, I know, I knew a resole would like make my soles not look as terrible, but this is an upgraded pair of boots. Like, what have we done? We got replaced the rubber midsole with a leather midsole. Mm -hmm. And then we also... We put on the stained crepe uh, style wedge soles. But this is from, this is from Vibram. This is tougher, isn't it? Um, I mean, Vibram's well known. Uh, I don't know about the... That's a very diplomatic Compos answer. Yeah, I don't know about the composition makeup of the Red Wing brand versus Vibram. You're not a chemist and a cobbler? Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> and then added some, a little pop of color with your, your red thread, which I like. I like it too. Yeah. That's, that's, that's three ways these boots are, are vastly better than they were when, uh, yeah. when I walked in here, you know? I, I kind of, I just, I sort of assumed it was like, if you, it came with a broken leg, and we put a cast on it, like the leg's better, but it's not the same, it's not as good as it used to be. But this is better than the pair of boots that good I used deal. to have. Yeah, I'm pumped. And Thank you got a hand in doing it too, so that's good. And I've got, and, and there's probably like three other guys in the world that have like red stitching on their, uh, on their Red Wing shoes. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. Cool, all right. Well, well uh, uh, yeah, all right, I can't wait to weather. Thank you very much. Sure thing. There it is. Oh yeah, also uh, subscribe to their channel, man. They're absolutely brilliant cobblers. Uh, Trent and Heath Trent and on Heath. YouTube. Uh, they're in the description below uh, and they're much better at doing boot stuff on YouTube than I am, so make sure you check them out.